Hey, welcome to Mikey's Video Game Madness. I know I said that I would continue to make videos when I did Sakura Wars, and it's been like a month now, or almost a month. I apologize. I'm not going to make promises from now on, but judging by the statistics on YouTube or the analytics or whatever you want to call it, like it looked like nobody watched the video, so... I'm kind of doing this for me, so I feel good, like I'm doing something, and I'm being productive, and like I said, this is kind of like a, um, a live journal, kind of in code, where I can watch it, and kind of know where I was, what I was doing during that time, and you can watch it as me just kind of chilling with you as a game is being played on screen. So today, and I apologize, I have, um really bad <coughs> acid reflux because I've been having trouble sleeping and the only way to stay awake is coffee and other forms of caffeine like energy drinks or coke or whatever but um yeah so if I choke I apologize today we're playing Sea of Solitude and this is on the PlayStation 4 it's pretty much available on every platform except maybe not the switch I don't know so Xbox PC PlayStation this was um, shown off on e3 one of them I think it was the one that sh had Keanu Reeves introducing cyberpunk this is announced during I believe Xbox's show or maybe it was EA's I don't know or both because I remember I was like stressing at the time because I didn't have an Xbox One X at the time <sighs> how many times am I going to say at the time during a sentence anyway um I was worried that this wasn't coming out on PlayStation so um I was like, oh, that game looks really cool. Um, when I saw other people, I'm going to say um a lot too, apparently. When I saw other people like look at the um, E3 coverage and stuff like that, they didn't seem that interested in it. And to me, this really appealed to me. This game's theme, as I'm sure you saw in the disclaimer, is kind of about like an artistic way of trying to convey um the feeling <coughs> of loneliness and solitude solitude sorry I'm trying not to choke and talk at the same time and solitude on um in a creative interactive way um <coughs> basically you're just trying to follow that other person that's like a lighter side of you and you're kind of being chased by this monster this is the first time and the last time so far I've actually really played this game there's actually a sale because I guess nobody bought it and I happen to buy it during a sale I'm trying to think what the theme of the sale was I think it was during um when quarantine was a big thing and they were trying to get people to stay at home more so they had a lot of video game sales and stuff like that so me who struggles with um mental illness and i guess loneliness to a certain degree i am an introverted person but even introverted people need people in their life occasionally maybe not as much as a normal person because your social battery drains faster and stuff like that but I oftentimes feel isolated and when you're an introverted person as well at least with me and my experience you even feel alone when you're in a group of people that you don't really click with so typically you'll end up having like a small if you have friends um I have a couple of really good friends um some I actually can see in person some are unfortunately long distance and when you get older that becomes a more common theme like when I was younger um, most of my friends were at, at arm's length but I found myself to be lonely a lot because 
I don't know, like, you start to realize that people are draining your battery. Like, I didn't realize how introverted I was until, like, maybe mid to late 20s to 30s. Like, that's how long it takes. I'm still discovering stuff about myself. I hope you are, too. I hope you don't have your way is set and you're trying to think that and feel like you know everything about everything there is to know about you everything to anything I don't know obviously when you don't record for a long time um, you usually fucking suck at this and that I am doing or at least I feel like I'm doing I really like the art style of this this game for whatever reason reminds me a lot of trying to think of what the name is because I always get the two games I guess the the tone's kind of similar I think they're made by the same people there's the vanishing of e- Ethan Carter I believe is what it was called and then there's what remains of e- Edith Finch this one game reminds me somehow even though they're unrelated completely different themes completely different gameplay but it reminds me of what remains of Edith Finch and I believe it's just that somber tone um on the PlayStation 4 Pro at least you can do standard or performance um with PlayStation 4 Pro I always just leave it on like whatever the gr- the highest graphical fidelity is because since the chip is basically like overclocked it's not s- as powerful as say like the Xbox One X but a lot of times they'll waste the power on native 4K like but a lot of times like with these performance modes even though you might occasionally hit 60 frames per second Usually the frame rate and these performance modes on um, PlayStation 4 Pro usually is between like the 50s and 40s. Um, another game I really, really liked, I will say there's a lot of cool games coming out on um, Xbox Series X. And one of the games that's really has me intrigued because I absolutely loved it and it and it's kind of similar to this game where that game kind of explores like psychosis I don't know what the sequel's gonna explore but I loved Hellblade Sinuous Sacrifice that's one of my favorite games on the Playstation 4 but it's on like everything including the Switch somehow I don't know what voodoo they used to to get that game on there or magic I, I don't I guess voodoo's insensitive in now. I don't. I don't really know. Although there are some people that probably would still call it that, but you know, YouTube in today's PC climate, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, I don't know what kind of magic or whatever they used to get it on the switch just like the witcher 3 but they did it looks terrible just like the witcher 3 does but it's incredible that they were able to get that game on it because it's an unreal engine 4 game and it's one of the best unreal engine 4 games ever played ironically it was an experiment with uh um with like trying to create like a triple a experience on a on a low budget and they really succeeded. It's so weird that um, it's an Xbox exclusive now. I know they bought Ninja Theory, but if you remember, like it was originally like a PlayStation Four, and I believe a PC, like um, timed exclusive, and and it did well. So I don't know. Like it didn't come out on the Xbox system and, and the Switch until later on. So it's pretty weird, but. Ninja Theory is a really good company. Like, I'm trying to think of all the games that they played. They made Enslaved. That game, I believe, it was called Enslaved Odyssey to the West. That game was pretty awesome. Heavenly Sword. Um, it feels a little dated now, but still one of the best looking early PlayStation 3 games you could have asked for. 
I actually really like the DMC Devil May Cry remake. They made that. That was awesome. I didn't play whatever game they recently released on the Xbox One. I believe it was some multiplayer game. Maybe it's not out yet. Either way, like you can tell how much I care about it. I don't even know what the fuck it is. But they made that, and I'm trying to think if they made anything else. But like Hellblade, that game was incredible. It looked amazing. Like to me, to this day, it has the best. This is this is so silly to point out, but shoreline effects on like the ocean. When you see the um the the tide come in, and then go back into the ocean. And you see, like, the sea foam and stuff like that. Though it's, like, some of the best effects. Um, the actress who played the protagonist in that game was incredible. Um, but in a lot of ways, this game kind of r- reminds me of that a little bit. There's not really much to say about this game. It's, like, one of those, like self-exploration games. I think these games are also good good tools for people who maybe don't suffer from mental illness or loneliness or psychosis like Hellblade covers. Um, I'm curious if Hellblade 2 will cover a different thing. They just announced um, I think they started yesterday and then they announced the um, Series X price today. Like the S is gonna be two ninety nine, and then the um, the X, the Series X is gonna be four ninety nine. Like, almost like the two ninety nine. Like, almost like if I had the money at the time. Like I don't, I don't have shit. Like I have, maybe. I had some money saved up for the PlayStation Five, but right now. My life's kind of crazy, so who knows if, A, I'll be able to get a PlayStation 5, but that's the ecosystem, like, I'm most comfortable with, but if I had the extra cash and not a ton and I couldn't get the best possible thing ever, like, the, um, Series S seems pretty awesome. It, It might be able to do 1440p, but, I mean... Honestly, like, even with the enhanced consoles right now, like, most of them aren't doing native 4K, and if they have, like, some sort of algorithm, like, the checkerboarding, or whatever, like, the PlayStation 4 Pro uses, and whatever algorithms the, um, Xbox One X uses, it it might be cool. The only thing I don't like about it is that it doesn't have a disk drive. And the hard drive is rather small, so it's dependent on you. I have the Game Pass, which it's almost like a, a rental console. As much as we want to fight it, I do think that that's the future. I mean, I hope I'm wrong. But even like with the games that are coming out, like for instance, the Avengers that came out. A lot of people are shitting on it so far I actually really like the game um but the single player portion of the game does not require like you to sign up online to be able to play it like all that shit is on disc and the game still requires you to have an online connection at all times in order to like sign up and download and play it or whatever. I can understand the multiplayer portion, but they want you to sign up to Square Service. So let's say the server goes down and you take it off of your hard drive and you try to play it again, the single player campaign from nostalgia, you won't be able to do it. And there's just they're they're giving you little hints of what the future is gonna be like, I feel like, and it's just gonna get more and more and more aggressive as time goes on like in the nintendo starting shit like with this mario 
3D All Stars or whatever the hell it's called as like the first few th- Mario 3D games. I really want to play Super Mario Land or Super Mario World 3D or Super Mario 3D World because I really liked 3D. I actually loved 3D Land on the um, Nintendo 3DS. But they're doing this thing where it's like limited time like purchase for the physical copy yeah i get this but then online it's like limited time like too and it's like what if you take it off your hard drive and it's like well you can always download it again but that's not always the case like when they lose licensing and stuff like that i have an example like i have a regular base playstation 4 and then a playstation 4 pro and one of the things that makes me not want to get rid of the PlayStation 4 is that I have the PT demo. And if I erase it, I never can download it again. There's not a server or anything that'll let me download it ever again. Like, if it gets deleted, like, if I take it to the store, I have to delete, the wipe the hard drive off to get credit, and I would lose PT. Even though it's it's kind of like a silly demo, I really like the game, and I really haven't played anything horror-wise that's that creepy, and I know games are trying to emulate it, and games like The Medium and stuff like that coming out on, primarily it looks like, the Xbox Series X, unless they're not advertising everything. There's another game made by the people who made, like, City of Light. Gosh, what was it? I have my phone on me, so I I can look real quick. It was originally supposed to come out on the PlayStation 5 as an exclusive. It's called Martha is Dead. That game looks incredible. And I really like the um, Layer of Fear games and the mediums coming out. I think that might be by the Layer of Fear people. And then it has the people that... Um, do the music for the the original Silent Hill games. I mean, there's a lot of horror games. I know they advertised um, Resident Evil 8, which I have mixed feelings about. I was really happy that the series was going back to its roots with the remakes, and I was hoping with the sequels after 7, like they would start to have zombies and stuff like that again, which I really love. And then it kind of bums me out. The next remake's going to be 4 and not Code Veronica, which makes absolutely no sense to me because Code Veronica was actually the real sequel to Resident Evil 2. And, like, 3 was kind of like they wanted to make a trilogy for the PlayStation 1. So uh, the reason why a lot of places are revisited and Raccoon City and stuff like that is that they didn't have like a lot of time they wanted to reuse the assets and stuff like that so it ended up kind of being like a side story awesome but a side story and I really loved the remake of that even though some people say it's too short but you know what in the mood I've been in lately after spending 40 hours on the Final Fantasy 7, sorry, <laughs> trying not to cough. The Final Fantasy 7, I'm not, sounds like I'm just trying not to cry. Final Fantasy 7 remake, and then The Last of Us Part 2. It's like, I don't know whether those are some of the best games I played. Spoilers, like, if I do make an end of the year video, there. Even though it's probably going to be controversial, especially for The Last of Us Part 2, because a lot of people are angry about how the story went. But I think it has some of the best gameplay I've ever played, regardless of how you feel about the story. I often say, like, nobody would get through the first story that everybody loves so much of the first Last of Us game if the gameplay wasn't there. There's probably games that people would consider shitty that probably have decent stories. Um, I'm not terribly too picky when it comes to games, but I've been kind of like numb. I think I'm in a rut, but I don't know. 
But playing back to back like two forty hour games, and then I got Ghosts of um, Tsushima. I believe that's how you say it. If I'm saying it wrong, I apologize. I haven't heard anybody say it the same way. Like everybody's struggling on that game, so I'm at the point where I'm just like, "Fuck it, I'll just say it how I think it looks like it sounds." Like usually, sometimes like you don't pronounce the T. I don't know. That game looks awesome. It looks like a game I love. Like, I haven't even finished God of War. I, like, I got far in that. And I know these are games that I love, but after two 40-hour games that I really, really loved, like, back-to-back, like, I'm just, like, everything I play just feels like blah. Like, I'd rather just go and play, like, something I'm already familiar with or something that's short, like... So a game like Resident Evil 3, which I played during that time. I think I played it right before I started Final Fantasy 7. It was just the perfect length. It was like 10 hours or 14 hours, depending on how much time you spent exploring and stuff like that. You could get through the game, I'm sure, much faster if you, like, rushed it. I always take my time with games, unless it's, like, Mario or something like that. I don't know. When I play Mario, like, I'm always compelled to hold the run button. Which is to my detriment of gameplay, especially if I haven't played Mario for a long time because I end up dying quite a bit, even though I know that I'm better than that. But, you know, I feel like a majority of games are a lot easier these days. Not to sound like that old back in my day person, but I do feel like they are because I'll like go back and play like some of these games that I used to be good at and I'm, I'm just so bad at them but then every once in a while you'll get a game like Doom Eternal that fucking kicks your ass like um the 2016 Doom was like awesome and the difficulty was up there and I was like yeah this is the perfect difficulty it's it's really difficult and I won't lie like when I was getting used to it I died a lot but on like normal I played it on the normal difficulty or whatever but I refused to put it on easier difficulty but damn like Doom Eternal like even though it's a, it's a great game like I have to like pause and distance myself for a while because I get frustrated but anyway like shorter games aren't always like a terrible thing or whatever so I don't mind shorter experiences and stuff like that. But anyway, way off track. Kind of bummed that they're remaking Resident Evil 4. That's been on every single system ever. Including, like they came out with physical copies for um, the PlayStation 4 already. It just, out of all the games, like it just blows my mind. Why would they skip Code Veronica? Code Veronica has the swapping system that was awesome and like the even the Resident Evil 2 remake where you had like the the B scenarios where li- they have a kind of like a B scenario for Code Veronica where you play as Chris Redfield like back in the day like it didn't work the same way as Resident Evil 2 like you had to beat the game as Claire and then you play as Chris like her brother whereas in Resident Evil 2 you had the choice playing as Claire or Leon and then you could choose like to either play as the beast scenario which is like a harder scenario with more stuff going on more story elements etc etc I don't think you could play like the beast scenario as the other character you'd have to finish that character's mission even the first mission was different and then when you play as the second mission, it starts you off at a different place. You see different things, and it still feels fresh, even though you're seeing a lot of the same things. And Code Veronica did it even further with, um, you had to beat the game first as, so it's not as content rich as Resident Evil 2, but, like, it had, like, a second scenario where you played as Chris, and what you did, like, what items you used and stuff like that. Which could make the game potentially more difficult. Like, those items would be used up. Like, when you played as Chris, like, maybe they could change that a little bit. Because that made the game a little bit ridiculously difficult if you didn't 
know what was going on like further into the game but anyway this is sea of solitude i was like way off talking about how i'm disappointed that there's not going to be a code veronica remake before resident evil 4 remake but this seems like a good game hopefully i'll talk to you sooner than later hope you're all doing well stay safe stay healthy um check this game out if you're interested take care bye if you want to like, comment, and subscribe! Thanks for watching!